Oscar Bevis for IFL TV in association with MTK Global. I'm here for Liverpool's fight week, it's the press conference, and I'm joined finally. Managed to get my hands on Mr. We've not done an interview before. No, we haven't, no. That's fine, I've heard good things about you. Thank you very much. <laughs> right, Liverpool fight week. Yes. Do you feel like for John Ryder, people, I mean, this was said in the press conference, yeah. I know that it's something you feel like. Um, people are building up Callum Smith, Canelo, Billy Joe, and all yeah. these big fights in Anfield. And potentially overlooking the fact that John Ryder's Big finally time. got his chance yeah. and he could take it. Big time. And I think uh, Tony Sims, I thought, gave a great speech. You know, you've got to remember those two are really, really close, as are Joe and Callum, but they've been working their whole time together to change for the world title. And on Saturday, it's come. Now, it's not a guy that we've picked because he's with Matrim. He's a mandatory challenger. He's won two final eliminators. He's on a brilliant knockout run as well. And he really fancies this. You know, sometimes you get these situations where people are talking about the next fight and the next fight after that. I saw it with Joshua Ruiz. I'm getting the feeling a little bit like that for Wilder and Ortiz on Saturday night. And you're getting it here where, you know, it's not Callum saying, oh yeah, yeah, Anfield, Anfield. It's the journos asking him the questions, going, oh, who do you want to fight Anfield? Who do you want to do this? So I know Callum's a real pro and so is Joe Gallagher. They wouldn't have taken this lightly. Um, but, you know, I think, uh, let me just get this one sec. Hello? Sorry? Alright mate, it's, uh, it's, it's not. So uh, <laughs> then it's a situation of, uh, you know, um, people sometimes overlooking someone, you know? And I think it's a situation where, is Callum Smith overlooking John Ryder? If he is, it's going to be a particularly difficult fight. It's going to be a difficult fight even if he's not overlooking him. Um, but I think really you're in a position where John Ryder has earned his shot. It's a domestic world super middleweight championship fight, ring magazine belt, WBA super championship, massive opportunity for John Ryder. But Callum Smith is established as the number one super middleweight in the world and he'll be trying to prove that on Saturday. What are the plans for Callum if he is to come through John Ryder? Look, at the end of the day, I think Callum's at a stage in his career, he's made a lot of money. He's the number one super middleweight in the world. He wants those career-defining fights. This fight was about having a homecoming. He's been on the road boxing around the world. He's back in Liverpool. But the great news for fight fans is he's not taking a guy out of the top 15 that you know just happened to be cheap and we brought him in for a, a nice homecoming. This is a proper fight on Saturday night. So, so could he have done that and postponed wider to Probably, perhaps, uh, probably, yeah. yeah. But I don't think, you know, with the time and everything, once the mandatory come up, it was not, oh, we, you know, can we get around that? It was like, look, I felt to myself, we get a lot of criticism for big fights, domestic world title fights going on pay-per-view. So this was an opportunity to do a Saturday night fight night with London against Liverpool for plenty of the marbles for the Super Middleweight World Championship. So we put our neck on the line, we stuck the money up and we went for that. And it's so much more rewarding sticking the money in doing that and sticking the money in for a guy who comes over, you don't really know a lot, get iced in the first round and everyone goes, what was that? So now we've got a real fight and a proper fight. So, um, yeah, I think uh, if Callum wins, then Canelo, uh, Danny Jacobs, Chavez winner, and particularly Billy Joe Saunders. I mean, really, you've got Billy and Callum, they both want to fight Canelo, or Triple G, or one of those guys, but if they can't get that fight next, they really have to fight each other. Because that's a big, super middleweight unification fight between two Brits. How often does that happen? So, you know, that's a that's a, a big, big fight. But again, John Ryder will be looking at it and saying, fuck, if I beat him, I might get Canelo. Mm. So that's what's on the line. Isn't Billy Joe too busy chasing Andrade around the airport? Yeah, I know. I got randomly bumped into random, each other in London. Yeah, I think um, Demetrius has got some pals here and uh, he was over and they just bumped into each other at the airport. How random. I mean, there's another fight that could get made as well. So, um, yeah, but I think, you know, Billy, B Billy and Callum and Demetrius and Danny Jacobs, they're all at that stage now where they want those big, not, not even just paydays, just big legacy career defining fights. And you'll see them in them on, uh, in 2020. But Callum has a very, very tough fight. I mean, this isn't, you know, you saw Billy Joe the other week fight Caceres. Now, he didn't have the best prep. I felt like he needed a knockout to win. He pulled it out of the bag. John Ryder's a different animal to Caceres. So, but I know Callum's trained hard and I know they've taken the threat of John Ryder very seriously. Okay, just quick run through the rest of the card. Um, I didn't expect that from Harry Scarf. To yeah, I know, I know. That's a good yeah. fight, that is. I mean, you know, social media is a funny place where 
you announce Fowler against Scarf and people come back going, what a load of shit, who's Scarf? Right about, you know. And then they start looking into it, realise he had a really good win last time out on Channel 5. He's got a good team around him, Clifton Mitchell, he's got a lot of support coming up from Derby. They really fancy it. And on a lower level to Callum against Canelo at Anfield, you're talking about Fowler Fitzgerald at Preston, right? And everyone's talking about that. Harry Scarf's going, fuck that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to derail that. This is a really good fight, tricky style for Fowler. You know, people are saying Scarf, you know, he's tricky, he's awkward, he's going to box Fowler. Fowler's got to try and, you know, force the pressure, try and hurt him, try and slow him down. That's going to be a really close fight over 10 rounds and a, a really important fight for Fowler's career. Do you think it's been a bit of a tough time, Franny, obviously coming from sort of the esteemed amateur background mm. and sort of being the A-side in the whole Fitzgerald fight and now it's like, if he is to fight Fitzgerald, it'll be at Preston. Mm. A lot of people would back Fitzgerald to win a second time. Do you feel like it's been quite a tough time, Franny? No, I think it's been a great time, Franny. I think he's had, you know, I say everything on a plate because he's earned it through his amateur pedigree. But, you know, it's been a lot tougher time for people that can't get a fight date. You know, who don't even get paid yeah. to fight. So he's got a great opportunity. But what I think he should be proud of himself for is turning it round after the Fitzgerald fight, going in in a proper fight against Brian Rose, getting the win, now taking on another live fighter in Harry Scarf. You know, really, he could have just had an easy fight on Saturday and then just tried to wait for the Fitzgerald fight. But he wants a proper domestic fight that people can actually get their teeth into. And he wants to prove his worth in the, in the Fitzgerald rematch. You know, it was a very, very good fight, close fight. But Fitzy won it, he beat Cheeseman. And now, you know, he's top of the tree domestically, so... And is that nailed on, Preston? Not, not necessarily, but Preston, Liverpool, you know, that fight needs to happen. It's just a case of whether it's going to be March or if we go to Preston, it'll be the summer. OK, and just the other two, fight, uh, other two big fights on the card, yeah. we've got Craig Glover and Chris Billum-Smith. That, that, that for me, could be fight of the night. Yeah. I mean, uh, well, there's three other fights. You've got that fight, which I think is a great narrative in that. Two guys that must win, two guys that can fight, two guys that can punch. You've got Craig Glover, Glover, managed by Tony Bellew. You've got Chris Billum-Smith with the McGuigans and, and promoted and trained by uh, Shane and Barry. Uh, really good fight. No way that fight goes 12 rounds. No way. That's going to be, I think you're going to see a real clinical knockout in that fight. Masha Dodd against Tom Farrell. In great the same fight. boat, must yeah, be. Yeah, and again, and look, you know, Tom Farrell's such a great kid. He's been, you know, he's been slung in the deep end before against O'Hara Davis. He's come back. But, mate, he sells six or 700 tickets out of his pocket. You've got Masher from Birkenhead, does a huge amount of tickets as well. They're pally, they've got the same manager, but let's be honest, the loser could be done in boxing. So you're going to see a great scrap between two guys that are essentially fighting for their, for their careers on Saturday night. And then you've got another fight, which is going to be our Facebook fight, which is James Tennyson oh, against course, Craig yeah. Glover. Yeah. Really good fight. Craig Tennyson, Glover? Uh, sorry, well, that could be a good fight as well. Uh, Craig, uh, Craig Evans. Yeah. Really good fight. Craig Evans has been around. You know, we know he's a talented fighter, a good amateur. But James Tennyson, I think, really might be the dark horse of that division. Maybe on a Europe level, maybe even on a, on a world level as well. He punches fucking seriously hard. And I think some of the frailties he had at Super Feather, he may not have them anymore up at, up at 135 because, you know, I think he's, he's making the weight obviously a lot better. Right, let's talk all things AJ Ruiz in yeah. Saudi. First things first, a pay-per-view. Mm -hmm. Increase to 24.95 from uh, we were getting used to 19.95. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. And now it's to 24.95. Um, talk to me about the thinking behind that. Um, not my decision. I'm governed by Sky's decisions on that. Sometimes they consult me. Sometimes uh, it gets done. It's a freak event. In that, it's probably one of the biggest heavyweight fights of all time. Um, the last one was 9.95. You know, it no, no pricing ever means this is the future. I don't believe you will see pay-per-views at 24.95. Again, unless it's the fight of the century. Can you see why some people are perhaps sceptical that you'd compare the price of Joshua Ruiz to the KSI? No, 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 two, no, no, no. I'm not comparing them. I'm just saying that one's yeah. 16.95, one's 9.99, one's 24.95. Neither of those prices, other than the sorry, the, the 19.95 one, are the the foundation price. You know, the price that is kind of like almost a standard pay-per-view price. 9.95 was just a decision from Sky that. This is a fight at four or five o'clock in the morning. Um, you know, smaller card, less relevance, maybe to a casual audience. That's 9.95. They came back and said, this is the biggest heavy, one of the biggest heavyweight fights of all time. It's going to be 24.95. So despite people thinking that I own Sky uh, and own DAZN, I don't dictate the price of their subscriptions or pay-per-view. So um, I understand the decision because of the size of the fight. You know, obviously I end up getting a stick for it, which is just part of the, part of the game. And I understand that as well. So, um, yeah, but it's going to be a momentous night. Are we going to get Dillian on that card? I believe so, yeah. yeah. 
I think in the next 24 hours, I hope to have that confirmed. I think he's been putting stuff on social media. Yeah, well, I know, I know. It's like, yeah, he's done the confirmation himself. He has, and it's not confirmed, but I do believe uh, there's a very good chance it will be today. Okay, um, Chavez Jr., mm. this Varda situation, mm -hmm. I mean, I've seen all sorts in written press, etc. Yeah. One thing about the potential, you looked at California for the fight, mm. and there were some words of... Uh, body there that wouldn't allow the fight or no, so what there's, happened, loads, there's loads of this, 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 is what, this is what happened so we were looking to make Chavez against Danny Jacobs we're looking at three sites Nevada uh, Arizona and Texas um, I spoke to or the our office spoke to the Nevada Commission and said we'd like to do a request the date of December the 20 so we can hold that with a commission uh, who is it it's going to be looks like Jacobs against Chavez Chavez hadn't signed an agreement Chavez hadn't enrolled in Varda and we were just finalising everything with his team. Varda turned up to test him, and he said, I'm not enrolled in Varda. I haven't signed the contract yet. I said, oh, you're fighting in Vegas, and you know, he said, well, I'm not. I haven't signed anything, and I'm not enrolled in Varda, so. Is it something to do with once the confirmation is out there, then if one, they have yeah, to be yeah. enrolled? Uh, by me requesting the date effectively, because I'm holding the date, because I know the fight's going to happen. Yeah. So then, all of a sudden, uh, he says, I'm not doing the test. So effectively, he misses a test, and you know he should have just probably just tested, but he's a paranoid guy. He's had plenty of problems, and he said, "I ain't signed up for nothing, so go away." They also turned up to test Danny Jacobs in Atlanta. He was in New York, so the whole thing was a bit of a mess, to be honest with you. And it was all a bit strange. But anyway, so Nevada turned around and said, "We're going to suspend your you." Well, he doesn't have a license, and he's not American. So I'm not sure how they suspend him, but anyway, that was their decision of Bob Bennett, which we respect. We then spoke to the ABC, we spoke to them and said, look, what do we do in this situation? You know, we have the right, presumably, because Nevada's Nevada, to apply to other commissions to see uh, if they will license the fire. Yes, you can. So we went to the sites that we were in negotiations with in Texas and in Arizona. And the answer was yes, no problems. Went, we decided to go to Talking Stick Arena, which is home of the Phoenix Suns, which is where Chavez Sr. had his last ever fight. Arizona Commission said, no problem at all, uh, as long as he starts testing straight away. And he, he signed up on the day, once we said that to him, to full VADA testing, and so did Danny Jacobs. I sent the forms in to Margaret Goodman, and she said, no, we're not going to test him because he's suspended in Nevada and I don't want to upset Bob Bennett. I was very disappointed with that. They're an independent testing commission. And my answer to them is, are you going to test Jarrell Miller? You know, because that really upset me. And the answer is yes, they're already doing it. So this is a guy who's missed a test, and, but you test all these other random people because you don't want to upset anyone. So we went back to uh, Arizona, explained the problem. They said, uh, how about using um, drug-free sport? who test for the NBA, who test for the NFL, who test for a lot of bigger considering organizations. Considering there has been a lot of NFL players caught. Yeah, yeah. No, we were happy. To, to be honest with you, as long as the commission are happy with a, with a testing procedure, our job's kind of like done. This is a very reputable agency. So that's yeah. who we signed up with. And Phoenix turned around and said, no problem. Uh, Arizona, sorry. And we're on sale. We've sold a huge amount of tickets. Yesterday they had kind of a hearing, but they didn't actually decide anything. They said it's just postponed till December the 18th which is two days before the fight. Again, this is kind of new market, new territory for me. Spoke to Arizona Commission. They said, no, nothing changes, no problem. Fight goes ahead. So I'm hoping to speak to Bob Bennett. Bob Bennett wrote to me and said, we're not happy. We may not uh, extend your license next year when it's due. And I said, look, you're going to do what you're going to do. Don't mean to promote show in Las Vegas, so be it. But as far as I'm concerned, we follow protocol. The fight takes place and that's it. Okay, what do you make of the new O'Hara Davis? O'Hara is like, but he's hot and cold, isn't he? He's, I haven't seen O'Hara for a he long time. He shaved off all the bad energy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, but, he, but one day he was the, the bad guy, wasn't he? When, in, when they did the draw. Yeah, he was. And then the press conference, he, he went. He was away in front of people. He really? was saying yeah, that yeah, he was yeah. going to do certain things to certain people's you know, mothers. Like I, haven't, um, I haven't caught up with O'Hara. Wow, it's been a couple of years, you know. I, I had a big soft spot for O'Hara when we used to look after him. You know, because I felt like he was a kid with a chip on his shoulder. Um, who I enjoyed giving opportunities for. He can fight as well. Um, I think he lost the plot a little bit. He said some things he shouldn't have. You know, we, we, we never fell out, but I just felt that some of the things he said that he shouldn't have said, and that's history anyway. So, um, he, he's hot and cold, but he's hot and cold in the ring as well. Yeah. You know, I've, I've seen him look devastating, and I've seen him look terrible. 
Like, his last fight didn't be Yeah, and again, I remember one fight with Scarper at Wembley, but then he goes out and he's you know puts his shots together. He can punch, he can fight. So, um, listen, love him or hate him, you talk about him. So that's never a bad thing, and I wish him all the best. And excited to see the MTK Golden Tournament tomorrow night. I take it you won't be going down and coming back. I'm no, I'm not going down, but I'll be watching. And I hope to get to the December 14th one in Brentwood. Light heavies. Yes. Yeah. Okay, Mr. Eddie Hearn, thank you very much for giving me my debut interview. Well done, Oscar. You passed thank the you. test, old boy. I'm sure I'll there's, let Mr. I'm sure there's know. many more to come. I hope so. Give me a good review. All right, mate. It is special. Absolute dynamite. Oh my God.